Welcome to the Web Platform Podcast, a developer discussion that dives deep into all things web. We discuss topics relevant to developing for the modern web and the web platform of today, tomorrow, and beyond. The Web Platform Podcast is a proud O'Reilly Media partner. As such, one of the benefits we provide our listeners, that's you, are special discounts such as 50% off of ebooks and 40% off of printed materials. So this includes but is not limited to books on web technologies as well as other technologies you may be using. So your discount code is all caps PCBW. That's PCBW all in caps. So head over to O'Reilly.com. That's O-R-E-I-L-L-Y.com right now to get all your favorite tech books at much lower prices. This is the Web Platform Podcast, episode number 71, Vaden Elements, which I think I pronounced right, and I probably should have checked before I asked. Um, <laughs> I'm your host this week, Danny Blue. Um, with us, as always, we have Justin Ribeiro. Hello, wonderful people. And then we have two very special guests, um, Yoni and Manolo. Um, so if um, you guys just want to want to go around, introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit, you know, who you are, what you do, what you like. Sure, I can go ahead and uh, take the first turn. So my name is Yoni, and uh, you got that name right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even try the other one. Yeah, that that was that was okay as well. Uh, we like to say it as like Bodin, but. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I'm I'm a product manager here at Bodin and uh, responsible for the Bodin Elements product, and uh, been here working for uh, user interfaces for like ten years or almost already. That's a that's a good stint. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I guess that's enough for now. Okay, my turn. So I am Manolo. I work in Bodin as well, and. Uh, my position is a developer in in the elements team at Bain. Uh I am a wheat uh, wheat expert. So some components are made with wheat, and also I know JavaScript as well. And yeah, that's my position in Bain. <laughs> awesome. So real quick. Um, can you give us a little bit of background on what, excuse me, give us a little bit of background on what Vadin does and ex specifically what Vadin elements are? Sure. Uh, so, as I said, I've been here for 10 years, but the company itself is like 15 years, and it's been always doing web interfaces, more, more or less. And uh, we've had our own product for Java developers for building web apps. For, for the entire history and uh, now we just kind of saw these web components uh, as the future where the web inter interface development is going to be I don't know in, in a few years at least um, and uh, wanted to get on board with that as soon as possible and uh, kind of broaden our user base at the same time and uh, what in elements uh, is then our humble beginning with the web components side of things. So uh, we've been a Java house for, for the 15 years, more or less. Of course, we have uh, we have the web expertise, but uh, it's been hidden behind the Java APIs before. And now we're just kind of opening up that side to yeah. our all of our users. That sounds fantastic. Um, always glad to see you know. Always glad to see companies starting to move towards web components in general. Anybody that's listened to the show knows that uh, we tend to be pretty big fans um, for all their pros and cons. So, with that, what is there a why that you can speak to of why the move from why the move to web components rather than something like I don't know, just doing like jQuery plugins or something like that? Yeah, there's no no hidden agenda here, so. <laughs> We're free to speak speak as we as we see things. Um, like the big reasons, I would say the biggest reason is that we just want to broaden the user base and not limit our fine elements or web components to just uh, Java developers. And I don't know, it's it's been like that for 
always, it seems, before web components that uh, you've had these huge frameworks kind of siloed with their own components. So you haven't had that interoperability really before. And now that it's uh, becoming possible with web components, we just uh, also want to be involved in that. And well, yeah, that's like, the, I would say the biggest reason. Yeah. But uh, we, of course, like to play with uh, any <laughs> new technologies that uh, that come to come into the web platform. So yeah, it's just some, something new, fresh for us. Yeah, no, and uh, interop is is crazy important and a, and a really big pro of web components in general. So it's um it's it is good to see. I said it before. It's good to see companies starting to to move towards that way. Um, so how does so the way that I understand it, so Vaadin elements are are polymer elements. Is that yeah, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, so why why go with why go with polymer? Why go the full polymer um, library route versus um, vanilla components or something smaller like a skate JS? Yeah, that's a that's a good question or a fair question. Uh, um, there's no clear answer, I would say. It's more like um, it just felt the most mature at the time. So we, we started uh, like that at the beginning of this year to play with Polymer more. We had uh, like prototypes of web components before that. Uh, but uh, uh, it just felt like we can move a lot faster when we just adopt Polymer as the underlying technology. So we don't have to write all that boilerplate ourselves and uh, we can benefit from the Polymer ecosystem, all the nice things that Google is offering there. And uh, at least right now, it feels like the biggest ecosystem around web components. I think most people would probably agree with that. Yeah. So uh, I've, uh, I, I think we've uh, discussed uh, options about like going vanilla or uh, maybe using some more lightweight, less frameworky solution for that. But uh, right now, it, I feel like it's the perfect fit for us, and that uh, we just uh, we get so much benefit of just using all those nice things that Polymer offers. Yeah, and I mean, using Polymer as a base, I mean, obviously, you, you, you get a lot of sugar on top. I mean, are you guys using a lot of that sugar for your initial sort of uh, first wave of elements? Um, I mean, what do you like about Polymer? I mean, what, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm a big fan of the data binding myself and of the fact that computer properties came back in 1.2. So, <laughs> uh, um, yeah. you know, but, uh, you know, what you guys have, when, when did you guys start using Polymer? Did you guys, were you guys, you know, in early days in the point five branches, uh, you know, did you go yeah, through the point was, nine it, RCs? Yeah, we we were on board like right around the corner of zero eight transition. So we started with zero five, and like pretty much right after that, <laughs> everything went out of the, out of the window, and uh, we we had to re <laughs> redo some things. But uh, it was all for the for the better, and uh, yeah, we've been on board since that. And, um, so it, yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, so since since you've been on board with it, I mean, um, you guys you guys jumped right in. I mean, you guys went to the grid <laughs> straight out of the gate. Uh, you know, you guys didn't start light and go. You know, we're going to make an input field. Uh, you guys went grid. I mean, uh, wh wh why did you guys yeah. decide to go down the grid path? Well, um, I don't know. I guess there's a few reasons, but uh, one was uh, maybe. That if we can like solve all the problems around the grid, then everything else will just follow. It will kind of be like easy <laughs> from there on. I think you guys are just but, like making it hard on yourselves. <laughs> yeah, the flip side of that is, of course, that we're making it really hard for us to get started. But uh, uh, what was I saying? Um, the other reason being, um, yeah, so... Since we have the grid, it's actually not a brand new component in itself. So as Manolo said, it's uh, actually built using WIT, so formerly Google Web Toolkit, underneath. And we have that uh, component ready 
already already it seems like um, last year not not completely polished but uh, quite ready to go and we just wanted to provide a web component API for that so we didn't start from scratch with the full grid and uh, because of that we felt like if we start with the grid it's going to be kind of such a huge component that it provides a lot of value to many users so it's a good kind of a gateway drug <laughs> sort of to buy in elements i mean that's i mean that that's a big one for a lot of companies right like to kind of prove like see we know what we're doing <clears throat> excuse me like i think you know kendo ui like one of their big things is their grid and things like that yeah so 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 i can de- i can definitely see i can definitely see the case why you would want to try to why you would want to try to tackle that first almost just get it out of the way saying like see yes we can do it here it is very yeah. nice um yeah sorry the Go thing that, yeah the, the thing is that at the beginning we had a big challenge trying to 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 make everything work together so at the beginning we had a grid made in in with in java and uh, we started to offer the JS interop for exporting things easily to the JavaScript community or uh, ecosystem. And also uh, Polymer was uh, in, the, in the beginning of, the, of his, uh, its, its history. And we wanted to, to, uh, to join a, a, every piece in, in, in one thing. And yeah, it's kind of playing with different things and at the end, see everything working right so it's yeah Yeah, it kind of started as an experiment and is this actually possible to do and uh, then we just saw the opportunity that yeah we should do this and And, and uh, you guys have been in the enterprise game for a long time i mean it's uh yes a lot of web developers may may, a lot of web developers may not know uh, about gwit these days um but uh, it's been around for a while and obviously you know in the enterprise Grids are kind of a thing, right? We use grids a lot of a lot of the time. It seems like a logical start point for someone who's been in the grid business for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's it was one of the components that we we had like we had a table in the core framework, uh, which was overdue for a rewrite. So that's where we kind of made the new grid. Uh, like I don't know, started two uh, one or two years ago. Started building that. So it's been a long journey with that already. So, so I mean, did you run into any initial sort of headaches with the sort of standards and specifications that are you know around web components that sort of make web components go in today's browsers? Mm, you mean in the integration of the existing thing, or just overall in web components? Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I'm, it's always curious to me. I mean, grids are. You know, everyone sort of has an approach to grids, right? Um, how you bind data in them, how you sort of deal with a multitude of rows. You know, if I've got a 10,000 row grid, you know, uh, performance can be quite bad. I mean, how did you guys yeah. sort of approach those problems when it came to uh, either the web component side or even, uh, you know, even just dealing with it on the web? Well, yeah, for dealing it on, on the web is... Uh that was also like a heavy research phase in the beginning, like building this, what we call the escalator for handling those tens of thousands of rows, like performantly in the browser. And uh, like reusing DOM elements, just showing the rows that are actually in the viewport, stuff like that, making it uh, accessible for uh, like screen readers. When you actually shuffle those rows, like reuse them, they end up in uh, the wrong order in the DOM except like uh, versus the actual visual order on the page. So then we reshuffle them back once you stop scrolling so screen readers can still read those in the correct order. All this kind of stuff had to be done beforehand. And yeah, it took a lot of time, like being performant on uh, mobile devices. There were tons of different uh, different um, things that we stumbled on, I, I bet. I wasn't part of the uh, initial project when they built the grid and uh, well for the web component side I would say it was su- such a new thing for the company and most of us working here so tackling all those you know, like data binding and uh, 
how to build a JavaScript or web component API was one of the big things that we had to had to solve. So you um you mentioned earlier that you guys kind of got on board at the at the beginning or close to the beginning. So you like point five to point eight to 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 one point oh. Um, what was the most challenging part about upgrading from those older, especially the point five branch, all the way up to all the way up to where we're at now in the you know in the one dot x phase? What was the biggest challenge moving from one to the other? Well, actually, what what we did is start from scratch in in point eight. So every every uh, prototype we had at the beginning, uh, almost we redo everything with the new version, and then from the point eight to uh, to one, it was uh, more smoothly. But yeah, the first prototype uh, were, were very different to the uh, current code. So yeah, okay, yeah, kind of offered a good point of uh, just redoing it, maybe rethinking some some things. And uh, I I wasn't. As I'm not directly part of the dev team, I can't remember specifics. What would, would have been the most difficult things to change? Uh, okay. I, it, it doesn't feel to me, uh, like looking back, that it was such a big thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm always curious to hear how people handle things like that when there's some kind of a significant upgrade. Because around 0.5, and you know, Justin, you know, tell me if I'm if I'm wrong, but it seems like around 0.5 is where it really started to gain traction in the community, and then you get more and more people using it, and then with the big rewrites, a lot of people had to go through this. So I'm always curious. Yeah, it was, it was it. really really like interesting or uh, even great to see the community effort when when the transition happened there wasn't that much documentation maybe but uh, a lot of people helping people like describing how things work and it was it was nice to see that as well cool all right so um i don't want to hog too much of the mic but uh you <laughs> justin mentioned enterprise grade or enterprise which is something that that uh, that your company has been has been known for um what does it to you what does it mean to say that you are creating enterprise grade um components um there's a few few things around that i don't know if the term is the like most uh this uh descriptive or uh i don't know easiest to market but uh we feel like it, it describes the things that we were after uh so one thing would be that uh we really stress the quality of the components. Like we do a lot of testing, user testing, and uh, like spend much time designing the elements. And uh, the quality, and then on top of that, we also have support for our components. So it's not something your cousin whipped up in an afternoon or you know during a weekend, and then never maintains or upgrades. So that's kind of the bigger promise of our elements that uh, we actually support those we have uh, like backwards compatibility promises etc and uh, well the final thing would be the kind of business aspects that uh, since we have been doing a lot of uh, applications for uh, enterprises and businesses in general uh, we think we have knowledge what those businesses want and need from uh, like ui components so we uh, want to cater those more instead of just maybe consumer apps. So, um, so, so around that idea about this idea of you know sort of the business side of things. I mean, sometimes enterprise is uh, somewhat synonymous with we are stuck with you know like IE version. Who cares? It's always bad, um, <laughs> <laughs> sort of thing. Um, you know, and 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 web components with older versions of IE um, can be troublesome. Um, yeah, you know, are, web, really are mix... web components for the enterprise ready? Yeah, um, <laughs> in that sense, uh, we're not maybe catering for those enterprises with this this offering. So for that, we have have our older stuff, like the old framework that they they can use to you for IE six or something. And um, yeah, I guess it's, it's also 
I yeah, well, I haven't even heard anybody mention a browser that old in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's like uh, not our latest framework version, but the version before that actually supports IE6 still, and we have support for that framework version still. But anyway, uh, like making the like division between consumer and web, I mean business type of apps can be quite tricky also. So it's um, I don't know, it's a bit of a some sort of indication what type of elements we want to build. Uh, which, but, which, which brings me to my next question. What else do you guys have in the pipe in terms of elements? I mean, right now, you know, you guys sort of came out firing with a grid, which is, you know, <laughs> yeah. which I think is absolutely amazing, by the way, because I think Thank grids you. are hard. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I have many know. stories to tell, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, what, what's next on your mystical roadmap of things? I mean, what other web components, uh, you know, are you guys working on that, you know, sort of help alleviate some of this strain that's sort of in the enterprise and in the business side of things? Yeah, well, mostly it's uh, about big sets of data. And uh, agreed, it's like a natural thing for that. And the next thing that we're currently building uh, is a combo box, which is also about huge set of items that you need to filter out so that's that's one thing that we're uh, trying to finish up by the end of the year actually the first version of that uh, at the same time as we try to finish up the first final I mean uh, yeah final version of the grid and you and guys are working on these in the open correct you, you guys are working yes, on these on yes. github totally so if people source. have pull requests out there pull request yes. <laughs> <laughs> Patch is welcome, uh, the usual phrase goes. Uh, yeah, currently, we, I don't think we have a proper roadmap visible, like very clearly anywhere. Uh, it's, uh, it's on my to-do. I should uh, add that somewhere. But yeah, we, you can find us on GitHub. So GitHub slash Vardin and uh, slash Vardin dash elements. That's the main repository. Another and thing. Uh, after, after the combo box, uh, we're actually, we have uh, designed a new date picker which we would like to build, but um, I heard some rumors about the Polymer team wanting to, uh, providing those as well, so it's a, it's a bit um, under consideration how we want to proceed with that if we want to kind of duplicate efforts there. Another big thing um, in a lot of these like enterprise widget frameworks are, are charts and things like that. Do you guys have plans to, to try to dig into any of that stuff? Well, thanks for asking. We actually do. So ah. that's the other thing that we've been working on uh, during this year already. So uh, providing a Web Components uh, API for our charting library, Vardin Charts, which uh, actually builds on top of Pi Charts. And uh, it's already in alpha stage. It should be quite soon in beta. Can't remember the actual dates or anything, but uh, it's uh, also available in GitHub for if you want to test that out. So yeah, we definitely have a like a full fledged charting library, which is also something very enterprisey. Yeah. So, so with that, we're talking about you know like the things that you're things that you're actively building. What is the what what is the design and development process like for these? I mean, you guys have been doing this for a long time, not just with web components, but designing componentized pieces to for for other stuff. You're talking about stuff with Java earlier. But so is yeah. is the process any different from from that from going from say like that Java world to web components on the on the front end? Well, um, at least for us, it's now a little different. But I would not say it's because of web components. It's just maybe that we're matured during the years how we approach the design of these. Uh, like previously, it uh, has been a lot more ad hoc how we've uh, like added new components to the framework. But now we try to approach them more systematically, like um, actually interviewing our own developers and customers, seeing what has been built, what has been like the problems. Uh, they have to have like invent workarounds using our current components and uh, trying to like find improvement ideas there. And uh, well, from there on, it's just goes to like the design phase we uh, sketch things out write scenarios uh, like build some uh, prototypes maybe different different variations uh, 
maybe do some user testing on those already or build some functional prototypes and, and uh, then user test those. And there's, there's a lot of design and testing going on in, initially. So do you guys have dedica- like a dedicated design team that just focuses on one thing or is ev- does everybody kind of do everything? Uh, we have, have it like a UX design group inside in the house, uh, but they're mostly working on customer projects, just designing like um, customer applications. But luckily for our elements team, we actually have a dedicated designer in our team. So uh, that's a big bonus for our team. No, so yeah, he, he's, yeah, and I, I actually have a, a background in design. So my other title at the company actually is a design director. <laughs> so. So we have like a double team of designers in this team handling these these design issues. Awesome. So we mentioned before, talked about enterprise, and one of the ways you defined that was a, a big focus on quality, right? Yes. So how how do you go about testing your elements? Because and you also mentioned that they are ver- that they are very well tested. What is your te- what? What is your all's testing process for this? Like, do you do um, do you do any kind of unit testing on the elements, um, as well as like more end to end stuff? Um, what what tools do you use? Um, what processes do you have in place to ensure that you are putting out these really high quality pieces? Yeah, well, I guess I can take this as well. Um, so we do basic unit testing with uh, currently with using Web Component Tester, the kind of standard stuff for polymer elements, and uh, we're actually we already had almost uh, like a visual regression testing uh, added to the project, but uh, we didn't go ahead with that yet since there were a lot of uh, like visual changes still coming to the to the grid. So we're going to start that at some point, like doing a screenshot comparison testing, so we don't accidentally break any any styling during development and. Um, then on top of that, uh, as I said, we do the user testing. So whenever we have something implemented, ready, some new API, some new end user functionality, we run that through our uh, user testing process, which uh, usually involves at least five, five different people doing a set of uh, tasks uh, for that particular feature or, or component. And uh, well, depending on the results, then we might do some changes. Okay. So how does, and this is something that person, I haven't done much unit testing with, with web components themselves. Um, how does it, how, how does writing unit tests for a component differ from writing a unit test for say just a function that you have? Like, are you still just, are you just testing the API? Like, are you actually checking to make sure that, um, the correct DOM is being put in, that the correct DOM is being put in place? Like what, how, how do you go? How do you go about deciding? Okay, I I need how do you, how do you go about writing a test that actually tests something in a web component? Maybe well, Manolo wants to take yeah. this. Yeah, actually, when we have a new new feature to implement or a new or some fix to do, what we try to do is to define the the test for testing. Yeah, that's feature. So basically, we are uh, testing any single uh, API functionality, as well as we we have to test that all the attributes are set set because uh, yeah, in web components it's important that all the properties are uh, correctly set in the in the in attributes, as well as any. Interaction, user interaction, like clicking on on a button or whatever. So, yeah, we try to to cover almost the functionality with with testing, but we are not we, uh, doing visual comparisons right now, but using real browsers. So what we do is uh, run our test in in all possible devices from the beginning. So as uh, any new feature is tested in in all the devices we we are targeting. Yeah, we're using Source Labs currently for that. So uh, exactly. we're we're running uh, tests there, all the unit tests, and uh, I think we're using uh, is it Mocha 
also on top of like uh, the basic web component tester. I think that's that's kind of standard also there with web component yeah. tester and uh, Sinon also. Okay. So um, it's I don't know. We try to test as mu much as we can, and uh, unit test is like the starting point for that. And yeah. uh, we try to te also test the, like Manolo said, the user interactions, and not just the like manipulating it through the API. Okay. So it's kind of a end-to-end -end testing in that sense. Yeah. Now, that's what I was gonna say, it kind of sounds like you're doing some of that end-to-end -end testing as well. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, the unit testing part is something I'm always curious about because it is it's a little bit different than and I have the same questions about you know, even things like react and how you test a, com a how you test a component versus if you're just testing you know like um, you know a few JavaScript functions where everything where it's pretty straightforward um, how would you approach yeah. it um, so excuse me I have to collect my th I have to collect my thoughts so so, so that's so that shows you know, like a lot of your like I said going through. So it sounds like you're trying to define your tests first to to make sure that you get a lot of this stuff done. Um, how how does the rest of how does the rest of kind of how, how does the rest of the dev process work? I mean, in terms of in terms of in terms of tooling and and things like that, because you know everybody knows you can't write front front end code. Um, you can't write front end code anymore without without some sort of tooling or or uh, some sort of you know build process in there. So. Um, so, so what are you guys doing to to get your stuff shipped? Yeah, for for, for uh, like basic uh, dev process, we we're following Scrum currently. So we we have uh, sprints and uh, some different <laughs> some definitions before the sprint and that. But uh, I guess Monolo can cover like our tooling, what we actually use day to day for uh, for development. Yeah, uh, basically. First, the, the first interaction in a feature is that the designer uh, shows some mockups. Also, the product owner uh, give, uh, gives us uh, 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 some ideas, new ideas or how the, the new feature should, should be. And then what we do in, in our um, uh, meetings is try to, to write correct cards for for those uh, features and maybe if we want if we need some research we create new cards in 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 the backlog for the next sprint for researching stuff like uh, accessibility or whatever we need to, to research and then we try to write cards with everything set even what Parts of the feature should be tested, or, or also we design the the JavaScript API interaction with the developer or whatever. And at the until we don't until we have the the correct card well written, we don't uh, estimate the the effort for that card. And at the end, we pick up some cards from the next sprint and we develop them. But we have a lot of meetings trying to figure out the the, the yeah, like the, the correct the things issues. that yeah. we need to do. But yeah, for for like um, doing the development, uh, like our tool chain consists of uh, pretty basic, I would say, kind of standard Polymer tool tool chain. We have used Gulp for some build processes, and uh, of course, we need to use it to compile the grid itself and. Um, well, um, we then use GitHub, mo just mostly for our issues, and uh, actually use Waffle, Waffle.io on top of that, which is a really great product for doing uh, Scrum backlogs. So if you, if, you do, you guys know Waffle? No, I'm actually I'm 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 looking it up right now. Yeah, but. so it's like like if you know Trello, then uh, it's Waffle is like Trello for GitHub. Okay. More or less, uh, it's uh, served us quite well up until this point. Since we have uh, like a lot of projects in GitHub that we just want to track on one board, so that's been really helpful. And uh, thanks for uh, 
actually um, Taylor Savage, Taylor Savage, uh, the polymer product manager, for uh, like hinting that for us that it can actually work in this kind of situation. And um, so. Yeah, you know, you're ahead. talking you're t just talking about the tool chain. I mean, you, you guys have been on the web for a long time. I mean, just in terms of, you know, the the way that you guys started, you know, started out building stuff for Gwit, and obviously, that's still a major sort of thing that you guys are doing. Obviously, yeah, and yeah. you know, sort of, you've been there through the web change, and I mean, how has the web changed for you guys? I mean, obviously, the tooling's changed, and you know, have all of these sort of. Um, you know, uh, like what what has that been like? If you've seen this sort of thing progress over time, <laughs> uh, it's it's like quite quite uh, hilarious actually. Looking back, when I, when I started here, doing some JavaScript development for uh, like a spell checking company, trying to do like on uh, dynamic spell checking or uh, live spell checking you know, in a text area, and trying to debug that in like IE five point five or IE six. <laughs> <laughs> using using something and believe me or not it's it was actually like windows i mean microsoft debugger or something can't even rem remember the name but it was actually the best javascript debugger at the time <laughs> shipped by microsoft and uh yeah since then a lot has gone like better and uh, using chrome today is just a, like a bliss compared to that and uh well, Gwit, it was like around 2005 or something when uh, Gwit started yeah. uh, started uh, being around. And we were, I don't know, we weren't like the early adopters of Gwit, I think, but fairly early on. <clears throat> and it was also kind of relief to use that back then uh, when, when we started to grow as a company and uh, had to be able to like push out code that could be handled by a larger team and understood by uh, like just a Java developer and not just JavaScript developers. And um, it was. And, and it I was mean, a, how, how are how are you finding mixing those two together now? Because obviously you still have both. Um, now you've got web components and you've got sort of legacy. I mean, that must be quite a battle, sort of you know trying to mash those together to you know sort of create this you know. Uh, happy sort of environment for people who are like, I can't use web components because I'm stuck here and what are you going to do? And like, that must be, you know, that must be quite a challenge. Yeah. Um, somehow we've solved most of those problems. And <clears throat> I guess the one issue is that we're kind of dependent on the current core framework in the sense that we're using the same component as in, as is shipping in the body framework. So uh, we have a, tight coupling with the two products there. So we have to handle that like on a, on a company level or team level that we need to communicate a lot with the teams, how we want stuff to work. And uh, since they have to support like IE8 and we don't actually with these web components, so that creates some problems also that whatever we want to like contribute to the core grid needs to work on IE8 as well and not not just IE11 which is uh, what modern elements support and uh, I don't know just tying uh, wit and polymer together maybe Manolo wants to say something about that but uh, yeah the, the thing with wit and, and JavaScript nowadays is that wit is uh, uh, evolutionating and uh, we are going to release GUID uh, 2.8, which is uh, fully integrated with JavaScript, so you can write code and, and export Java code directly to JavaScript and use it from JavaScript and vice versa. So you can uh, directly use JavaScript stuff with, without doing so much. So basically, the evolution of GUID is kind of type, like TypeScript. So as you have a high level language for uh, using JavaScript and more integrated with all the all the stuff written in, in JavaScript. So we have uh, taken advantage of this movement of WIT and it has been easy, easier to, 
to to use the the grid from polymer, right? So yeah, yeah. It's, it seems that everything goes to JavaScript, and uh, all the uh, all the frameworks are aligning with the, with JavaScript. So Wit is another framework which is moving to JavaScript as well. Yeah. So with with everything moving to JavaScript, and you talked about you know IE, you know some stuff, you know a lot of enterprise bigger companies having to support back to IE eight. What what is the reception been like for some of these? Compo- I know you're, you're you know you're still churning, still working through it. But what is the reception been like? Because I I work for a large company, so I, I know that I know the pains of some of that support stuff. So how are people receiving some of these elements, and how are they receiving just the idea of web components in general in their large enterprise solutions? Well, I haven't heard that much feedback about. Exactly that. We were at uh, HTML5 DevConf in San Francisco a few weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, uh, and uh, well, the reception there among developers about web components was, without a like doubt, positive. Everyone's really excited about those, and uh, I guess that's understandable among developers. We're just happy to just support the new stuff, and. Uh, well, for customer projects inside Vardin, there are projects that just need to support Chrome, for instance. So I would expect web components to like work for many companies even. And uh, I would expect like the IE8 support to decline quite uh, dramatically over like maybe next year already. Like new projects don't need to really support those anymore. We can only hope. Yes, <laughs> I feel like this is the time where we also fight about Shadow Dom again. Is this, Ooh, this is the part of the Shadow. show? We should... <laughs> Ooh, let's. All right, Sorry. I like it. No, we're fine. <laughs> so Justin does bring up a good point, and so you guys have been working with web components, and one of the things in Polymer. So there's the Shady Dom, and then there's just there's the Shadow Dom spec in general. I am personally of the mind that we do not that Shadow DOM isn't necessary. It feels kind of like an extra layer of something that I don't necessarily want right now, and that could just be my my total ignorance on it. Um, but so what? So so both of you, what do you think about? And I, I honestly, Justin, can't believe we haven't talked about it already. But what do you what do you think about that particular part of the web component spec about Shadow DOM? Are you for it or are you against it, or do you not know yet? Well, uh, as a like a former CSS developer and uh, like a theme specialist among the Vardin team, I would say I would have liked Shadow DOM very much <laughs> back then when we were like theming theming stuff, which would have uh, avoided a lot of uh, I don't know troublesome design decisions or workarounds that we had to do for our previous components in, in the framework, trying to shield us from some stuff like what other, um, I don't know, for instance, Liferay, which uh, we embed our body um, portlets into, they leak styles into our elements or components, and we need to try to fight those with uh, more specific selectors or something. So I would have wanted Shadow Dome back then. But uh, right now, um, I don't know, I'm... I would say it's it's something that we eventually want, but right now it's looking like we can cope still without it, uh, at least uh, in the, in a happy polymer land where they provide the style scoping polyfill or uh, shim, uh, which uh, kind of avoids many of these issues also. But uh, yeah, I I would say I'm pro shadow dom. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I too am pro Shadow Dom. So, all right, all right. I'm losing. It's two to one. it's two to one. I guess it's up to Manolo. Yeah. All right, come on, Manolo. Yeah. You for it or against it? I, I don't think Shadow Dom, Shadow Dom is going to to succeed. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Two versus two, straight down the middle. Yeah. So yeah, it's. Yeah, it's it's a nice thing when you when you start looking at it, 
but then it's very complicated to uh, to make things work. So if if, if web components were uh, always isolated from the page, Shadowdown is okay. But normally people wants to uh, to style web components and to manipulate web components with uh, CSS and and Shadowdown is yeah is difficult to for doing that. So and also the movement seems that uh, so, uh, other vendors apart from Chrome are not going to implement Shadow DOM. So well, actually, was... WebKit just shipped uh, some Shadow DOM version uh, in their nightly, at least. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're you're back to like being on the verge. <laughs> it's I, I know at least at least from my perspective right now it feels like Shadow DOM is holding us back from web. It feels like Shadow DOM is holding us back from web components for yeah, a large it's, part it's, of it. It's the I don't know the biggest uh, divider currently. Yeah. Well, it's markets. also it's also the it's the most complicated part. It is the biggest mo potentially most impactful part. So it's yeah. you know, So of course you're going to get differing opinions on it. But yeah, it's easy easy to see both ways. Yeah. But uh, but thank you, Justin, for bringing that up. We we can't we can't we can't go too long without arguing about Shadow Dom. <laughs> Our listeners have come to expect yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just you know it's an it's a, it's, a, it's a topic of interest, I suppose. Yeah. It'll, yes, following closely on it. Yes. Which we will you know we'll you know we'll know the answer in what you know a decade or so. Um, <laughs> yeah. Of course, we might not because it might still they might still be implementing it uh, in a decade. So. So who yeah, knows? I'm looking at you, I. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Edge. Like I, I will say, um, I just upgraded my home computer to to ten, and I'm using Edge. Edge is excellent. I don't know if you oh, guys well. have been using it. It's really good. I'm really happy and surprised. Yeah, it's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's something that we uh, we test on, like uh, also. And yeah, now that you mention, IE actually is never going to implement Shadow DOM. Yeah. That's what I, I know. Yeah, they're going to do it just for Edge. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, sounds like we're kind of we're we're approaching a stopping point. So, um, so just so go back around. Um, tell us, you know, uh, again, you know. Tell us your name. Tell us your, uh, you know, your Twitter handle, where they can find you on GitHub. Um, if people want to, if they're interested in using Vaden Elements, if they're interested in contributing to Vaden Elements, um, tell tell us all that stuff. Sure. So my name is Yoni. I'm going to even pronounce my last name for you, so you get that on tape. Koivuvita. So you can try that at home. Oh my God! I'm glad I didn't try <laughs> in front that. Of the mirror. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, Vardin Elements, so go to vardin.com slash elements. That's where you find all the relevant information. So, uh, awesome web components for your mostly business-oriented apps, I would say. But, uh, well, if you want to use those for consumer apps, go ahead. It's the free web. It's all, all, all good. And, uh, well, I would say we have the best grid on the market currently, at least for web component uh, people. And, uh, well, looking forward to the next elements that we're going to show you guys uh, coming up with the combo box and the possibly the date picker after that. So uh, go ahead on GitHub, give us your feedback, send issues, comments. We have a Gitter chat. You can find the link on, to that on uh, GitHub as well. And uh, just come say hi. Ask me tough questions or something. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I, I'm Manolo, and uh, I, I had to to add to Joni uh, that uh, we, apart from the Vadin uh, elements, we have produced as well in the elements team something for wrapping web components in from Wit, so Wit developers can try Wit uh, API generator and Wit Polymer elements. Yeah, that's um, a good point. Yeah. So yeah, you can go to Vadin uh, GitHub dot com slash Vadin, and you have a lot of projects there related with uh, co uh, web components. 
So yeah, modding.com slash GWT would be kind of the starting point for the with polymer elements. So we actually had a project that, yeah, turns out uh, Java APIs for all the polymer, nice polymer web components. So we did that as well. Yes, and uh, well, yeah, you mentioned something about a Twitter handle, so you can find me on Twitter at Yoni, just Yoni. Yeah, and, and on, Git, on GitHub, I'm uh, Yoni K. <laughs> okay, my handle in, in Twitter is Dolotis, and in GitHub is Manolo. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very, very much. Um, I always love talking about web components. So, um, I, and it's, again, always good to see people actually using them, like really trying to push this thing forward. Um, so thank you very much again. Um, thank you. Thank you for jo for inviting us. Yeah. And thank so, you. So this has been, again, this has been episode 71, Vaadin Elements. Um, as always, I'm Danny Blue. And I'm Justin Roberto. And we will talk to everybody next week. Call for Proposals is done and registration is open. And O'Reilly Fluent Comp is back in just a few months. Fluent, the web platform conference, will be held in San Francisco, California on March 7th through 10th, 2016. So get practical training in JavaScript, HTML5, CSS, and the latest web development technologies and frameworks. The Web Platform Podcast listeners receive a 20% discount when registering for the conference. So make sure you use the promotional code PCWPP20 to receive your discount. You want to learn more about what's coming on next on the Web Platform Podcast? Follow us on Twitter at, at the Web Platform or on Google Plus and YouTube at Plus the Web Platform. We also need your help in creating transcripts of the episodes and helping to create open source projects under our GitHub organization. Contact Eric Isaacson at E. Isaacson or Danny Blue at D underscore Blue. That's D-E-E -E underscore B-L-O-O. -O. Thank you for listening, everybody, and we'll catch you all next week.